and also the, the questions and answers. So, yes, sir. First of all, thank you. That was the best brief explanation of this I've ever heard. Are you going to tweet that? Get covered, open up, right? Get covered. Let's. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you turned it off? No, so, no, so, uh, no just uh, move uh, me and ask. It's okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead with your question. Uh, there, yeah, get covered over there. So the question, and I realize if, if this isn't your department, maybe you can help me find the person who is supposed to ask. Uh, the getcoveredillinois.gov website, is that website's code open source? It is not open source. Um, choice or just sort of, you know, know what you're talking about and up that Right. We, we, have, we are constrained, appropriately constrained, by some very, very uh, specific federal privacy laws. And you may have heard lots of media stories from opponents that want to challenge the efficacy of our security procedures. However, uh, we are actually going through, on for Get Covered Illinois, we're, we're actually going through discussions as we speak right now uh, regarding our, the next set of revamping of it. And I could, would be very pleased if you have some thoughts about it to, move, <laughs> to, to uh, have you have a conversation with the, with our point person on that. Thanks. So okay. let's, okay. let's touch bases yeah. on, on that. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that uh, presentation. If, so if, if I enroll tomorrow and or on March 20th, and you know, in time for that March 31st deadline. And I think you covered this, but I want to make sure I'm clear. You know, when is my coverage likely to kick in? Right. If for private insurance, assuming that you're that one is making more than a single individual is making more than sixteen thousand dollars a year, you will typically go into the private insurance marketplace. That's where you'll be routed. Uh, if you make a selection of the plan by the 15th of the month of a given month, your coverage will begin on the first day of the following month, presuming that you've paid your first month premium. Thank you. It, after the 16th, there's a lapse. So you effectively, by, by missing that, by, by waiting a day on the 16th, you're, you're going to be waiting six weeks for coverage. And any sense of how long, I mean, I'm sure it varies tremendously with the third party, but any sense of, you know, what, what a typical or estimated uh, you know, wait time is assuming I'm on the ball with my own side of it or whatever. Well, the I can tell you what the sequence is, um, and I can tell you this because I work with lots of consumers, and one of those consumers happened to be uh, my sister. So she in went through the entire enrollment procedure. Within 24 hours, she received a email greeting her to. It was from the private insurance company that she selected. It was a packet that had the broad outlines of the health insurance plan that she selected and information about the prescription benefits. Within a week of that, she received an invoice for her first month's premium and some additional information. Cool. Now, at peak times, probably bumping up on March 31st, that will be a peak time. Bumping up uh, the lead up to the January 1st coverage, uh, so late de mid to late December, those were peak times. The, the, there may be more delays, but the, the situation that I just referenced regarding my sister, that happened actually during December. So um, the, the system does work. <laughs> Um, Other questions, please. Do you have a question? Yeah, just a follow up to the first question. Um, I did a little bit of poking around and found that the reason why, or part of the reason why the website was so terrible for a while, uh, healthcare.gov, healthcare was because of how federal government is forced to bid for contracts and accept bids. And it turns out that um, basically, like they, a few other things, but they have to accept like the lowest bid. Um, which, you know, affects a lot of things and, you know, that's a big part of it. Uh, and so they're trying to change the way that the federal government accepts bids for anything technology related. Sure. Which will have a big impact on it. Right. The, 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 the procurement and the project management, um, there is going to be a lot of 
dissecting of all those processes. Uh, the reality is that the contractors that worked on healthcare.gov dot, health were not selected based on the lowest cost. Uh, the, the, what you described can be an impediment to government procurement, but it specifically was not an impediment to uh, what happened with, with the healthcare.gov. Uh, and as you know, they're, they're the prime contractor uh, has been uh, replaced. And uh, again, I'm, I'm not a federal employee, but I, I, I read about these issues uh, pretty uh, pretty extensively. But, but it, it, that was not an impact on the procurement process. The, the, as a matter of fact, several of them were single sourced. It's an important issue, and it also applies just as much to the state. So, uh, the amount of uh, the amount of website cost for the quality is is atrocious. It wants to it kind of like makes me want to be a Republican, right? So, like, <laughs> for some reason, to feel just like validated. Can, when we say website, because I so don't and, and part of the reason is that you know who showed up and had a bank account to support. But the biggest reason is that all people who couldn't show up. All people who, for example, the type of people who worked on the Obama campaign doing that technology, they could have never even shown up to begin with. And same stuff happens at the, at the state level. And the result is that digital services, public services that happen to be on the internet, suffer systematically as a result. Um, I don't know, with the exception of one thing you said, uh, I don't know that I would disagree with anything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Except for one thing, and that had to do with some party affiliation. That's not what I'm here to talk about. Right, so this is, I mean, sorry, well, what, is it going to be about procurement? No. Okay. <laughs> it's a very rich topic. I know there's a lot of opinions about it, and I have my own. Um, but yeah, for the sake of uh, keeping it constrained, maybe we can have a, a sidebar conversation. I have a conversation uh, after this. But yes, uh, Christopher. So for people who've gone through the marketplace, uh, they had their coverage, and then the coverage they've got from a private insurer like Blue Cross Blue Shield or uh, Golden Rule or what have you, when those companies misbehave or give um, customers trouble or just do a very bad job, is there someone on the government side that consumers can go to to say, hey, I'm having all 10 kinds of issues with the company itself and either getting health care coverage or dealing with Absolutely. bad actors? Absolutely. Now, it, it, you were just giving hypothetical uh, insurance companies because there are eight health insurance companies that are on the marketplace in Illinois. And the second one you said is not. Uh, but absolutely, the Illinois Department of Insurance has been very vibrantly involved in this entire process. And that is the office in which it, the, the point of contact on whether it's bad actors or it could be a misunderstanding. Uh, they're, they're, these, these rules and regulations are relatively newly implemented in that they went into effect, some of them, January 1st. And so uh, there have been some discussions about, uh, for example, the preventive care should be no out of no out of pocket cost. However, if the provider happens to code the service incorrectly, it may appear, hey, you guys owe us this copayment. Um, a discussion may resolve that with the provider, but it may not. And that's where contact with the Illinois Department of Insurance will be very helpful. And they're they're very responsible, responsive, and responsible. And they're they're really really great state partners in this for us. <laughs> Illinois Department of Insurance. Yes. So just a clarification um, for uh, the children of adults on say if, like I'm on my mom's plan, for instance. Is it when you turn 26, like your birthday, or your 26th birthday, or is it? when you turn 27 or like is it is it through 26 the end of the 26th year or is it have a birthday come up it is <laughs> <laughs> uh, i am uh, my birthday is on july 19th and i'm decidedly not 26 but, <laughs> but if i were 26 and i were on my parents uh, health insurance plan my coverage would lapse at the end of the plan month in July. 
They would functionally end on the 31st of July. They wouldn't, they don't, oh, 19, you're, you're gone. It would be the, the end of that plan month. But when you're during your 26, when you're still 26. So I'm 25. I turn 26 at the end of the I'm month. sorry, when when you uh, would turn, when you would age out of it at 27. When you hit 27. Ah, okay. Oh, so the month you become 27, end of that month. Good yeah. So, in addition to making sure we're all covered, which I, I know that we all care about, is another thing that people in this room all care about is data. And it, even though um, uh, help, uh, get covered in Illinois and healthcare.gov are, are new entities in the healthcare landscape, they are starting internally to, to generate data. And um, that's only going to, going to continue. Uh, when you say generate data? Well, by data, I mean the results of all these transactions that happen when people get enrolled, or when plans are offered on the marketplace, or um, when, uh, maybe like in Chris's example, when uh, there are a few transactions against insurers or what have you, all those kinds of things. Like, I know that last example was due to lie. So uh, one of the things that, that I'm wondering is, um, I mean, I, I know that it's a new entity and it hasn't had a lot of time to get started, but there is a state data portal. And I, I, people are going to be interested reporters and, and data hacks like ourselves in some of these kinds of results in the aggregate. Well, uh, how many people got enrolled and what counties were they in and you know what that sort of thing, as well as maybe some of the other things, the, the brokers and the assisters and that sort of thing. Sure. So uh, are there, as, as you revamp, you're talking about, you could be doing some revamping, are there plans to put some of this stuff out on the state data portal? And where would that even come from? Because you're part of the governor's office rather than Correct. a department. No, we're, we are a, a unit that is based in the governor's office. So if, when I look, for example, on, on the state website, who is the FOIA contact for the governor's office? There wasn't one. So if someone here wanted to say, well, I'm kind of interested in this. Can, is it possible to get? Who, who would they talk to, and, and what are those plans? Right. Uh, there, there is a, I, I could not tell you who that is. There, there is a FOIA contact for the governor's office. And if we can exchange information, I, information, I can make certain that you have that. Um, the reality of it is, is that issues about data Data privacy, consumer privacy, is something that we are very, very, very conscious of. Conscious of. We're also conscious of the the public's need and right to know, and there, there there's a balance on that. There is a chief privacy officer who happens to be the general counsel for Get Covered Illinois, and he spearheads the 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 real efforts on all of this. Uh, in, with respect to your comments about the data, uh, the data, much of the data that you cited, we'd love to have. We would very, no, <laughs> you're, you're laughing, but I'm, I'm quite sincere. The federal government, because we are a partnership state, and the actual enrollments on, for the private insurance are routed through healthcare.gov. And thus far, I'm not complaining, I'm just observing, uh, what I heard a snicker. <laughs> uh, I am just observing that we are getting much of this information in aggregate as well, and so I would love to know the geography of and, and other sorts of breakdowns. It would help inform the work that I do and that my my colleagues do. Uh, but the reality is is that uh, much of what you see in the media is what we have. So you're saying that, that the transaction can start in your um, the Illinois website, or the aid website, but then it ultimately finishes? No, aid is different. Aid is, is, different? is a, okay. is a so state then, portal. Okay, but then just, so, well then, okay, that's a separate and so, and we do And we do have information that's out there regarding the Medicaid enrollment okay. Okay. to the extent that there, there's a lot coming in, and as it is unbundled, 
that information is pushed out. Okay. Uh, however, the federal government has to give us much of the data regarding their private insurance. Uh, well, Healthcare.gov. So you guys control a part of that process, though. You actually are taking people through this uh, screener, screener to take to send them to the right place in Healthcare.gov. You could, uh, in aggregate, at least release some of data around that, which is at least partially useful, I would think. Well, we see how people are getting to the healthcare account. And we do. Okay. And that, that information is pushed out, is pushed out press releases, is pushed out on getcoveredillinois.gov. Okay. Information about how many visits to the, to the website, how many were routed in one direction or another okay. direction. But the reality is, is that once they are routed, uh, we don't necessarily know how that transaction concluded, whether it resulted or whether it was a looky-loo. That it, in the October, uh, there was a tremendous amount of interest from uh, media and others, op opponents that and supporters that just wanted to see what was going on. Right. They just kind of went right. through it, and put right. some stuff in their car, but then you know, right, and and they saw what was going on in October. <laughs> November. And there's a whole other thing going now and again since December 1st it's been a much much more positive uh, consumer experience and a much more functional one. Another thing that I want to underscore about the about data uh, the there is a surprisingly very thin band of data that gets transmitted one way or the other. The, that is the beauty of the design of the data the federal data hub is that it doesn't send back information from the IRS or uh, private information from this source or this federal repository or data warehouse. What it's saying essentially is yes or no. Uh, it pings to the uh, in, uh, to what formerly was would have been Immigration and, and Naturalization Services, Homeland Security. It pings to Homeland Security. This consumer indicates that they are a U.S. citizen and it pings back the response that they gave is co appears to be correct. So you're referring to uh, once you're on healthcare.gov, you create an account, and you want to verify your identity and your citizenship and your income, healthcare.gov goes out to a bunch of other databases, and then what it returns is yes, no, yes, no. Correct. And not, yeah, his address is. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and the, the, this is an area in which um, I think we all share that concern about privacy and uh, confidentiality and so it is it is relatively surprisingly relatively thin the the, the kinds of data streams but the the number of, of, of visits uh, unique visits and whether they're routed in this direction or this direction that that information from uh, getcoveredillinois.gov is pushed out into the public domain uh, when we when we aggregate it so you're saying because of the fact if you improve the design of Get Covered Illinois, you can't actually measure what impact that has on, on enrollments down down the funnel. Like how many more people probably signed up because we changed the the first thing you see on our website. Or if you do an ad campaign in a certain city, you can't see how many people ended up or a certain neighborhood, you can't see how many people ended up signing up enough for that The latter thing that you just said, the neighborhood, community, county. We, we do not have the ability to, to aggregate that because we would need to have that data from the federal government. Yeah. Or actually disaggregate. I think, yeah, well, what I was kind of getting at, which is a, is a common way for developing websites and improving them over time, is as you have people using them and you're measuring how they're using it, you can start testing things and say, oh, what if I made this button a little bit bigger or move this page closer to the Put, you know, instead of three clicks away from the home page, it's directly on the home page, right? Sure. And testing it now and seeing if it has a measurable effect. Actually, you could measure, because you, you can measure the part that you control, right? Which is Which people is, leaving. People right? leaving. Can you get the number of people uh, increased that are going to the portal? Or can you, in fact, another measure is reducing the amount of time that they spend on your site before they get to the stuff the where they need to be on the healthcare. Sure. Um, healthcare. There, we we have actually had discussions about um, trying to do some brain picking, right? All up in here, and so if it would be helpful if there could be one front-facing person that I can connect 
the, the uh, code is not going to be provided. That's, that's not going to happen. But in terms of uh, providing some really critical feedback mm -hmm. and critical input and having a different set of eyes, um, the, the, uh, and we, we kind of already have somebody that stepped up. Yeah. Um, so I would, yeah, I would even put that out to the group. And this is, you know, after, after we're done here, we kind of break off and into groups to work on things, but also uh, have discussions. So maybe if you want to stick around and have a working group, uh, to talk and call could be part of that. And other people who are interested in, in giving some technical feedback on the website, sure. that, that might be. Right. And, yeah. and, and in, a, in a kind of a macro, that would be, that may be helpful for me to to participate in that discussion, but but the reality of it is is that I have input into that, but I'm not the owner of that particular aspect of what we do. Okay. And so what I prefer to do is just do some matchmaking. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Great. We can definitely facilitate that to happen. Um, other questions? We have one more. Um, one last quick one. Uh, this affects me and some of well, it did affect me and some other people my age. But it goes back to the 26-year-old age. And it seems that me and a few other people have gotten responses from our parents saying that um, there is some insurance company we're grandfathered in and that you know we are not allowed on our parents. Thankfully, I don't have to deal with that anymore. But right. many of my friends still do. Right. I don't know about the specific kind of circumstances that that, that discussion would have been would have taken, but there are the concept of a grandfathered plan would be a plan that was already in effect on a date certain in March, which was when the when the law was passed, when the law was signed into and the bill was signed into law that if there were not substantial changes to that plan, uh, there were some provisions of the Affordable Care Act that would not necessarily have to comply with. Uh, much of that has become a moot point, much of it, because a number of health insurance plans uh, decided that they were going to cancel, uh, depending on your point of view, uh, wholesale or willy-nilly, uh, millions of plans um, and let the Affordable Care Act kind of just swing in the wind as if the Affordable Care Act forced that. The Affordable Care Act did not force that. The insurance companies made a, uh, health insurance company made a, a set of business decisions uh, in reaction to the, to the Affordable Care Act. So if it is grandfathered, there are certain provisions of the uh, Affordable Care Act that would not necessarily have to comply with, and that may be one depending on what the what the health insurance plan was that you're speaking about. There are far fewer potential grandfathered or grandmothered, since we're not going to be gender specific, <laughs> uh, health plans that are out there now. I have, I guess, one last question uh, about uh, enrollment. So it sounds like the big push right now is to get more people to sign up. And from my understanding, reading about this, and please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like the big, um, the big push is to get young people to sign up on the system because for the balance, sort of the balance of the coverage, young people, more there need to be enough young people paying into the system now in order to afford the older people who are going to be essentially pulling more money out of it. And so I think I've not seen campaigns to get young people involved. Um, so you know, first of all, is that uh, is that an accurate assessment of what's going on? Uh, in, in a broad sense, it is. Okay. The the notion of and I don't want to get into a, a big discussion about health insurance, but the in order to have the risk pool be balanced, the notion is, is that you're going to have people who are ill or anticipate illness, and they're going to seek coverage. Okay. However, people who are not ill, who generally may feel healthy and anticipate remaining so, may not seek it that would be an unbalanced risk pool. So the, the reality is that there could be people that would not be young, and for our purposes that'd be 19 to 35, but if they remained healthy. Statistically, however, that 
sweet spot of generally healthy person statistically and actuarially is going to be the 19 to the 35. But there are lots and lots of examples that in both case, both ends, very healthy 45 or 50 year olds, and uh, there are there are some people 19 to 35 that have some chronic illnesses. Mm -hmm. But by and large, what you just said is, is correct. Okay. Uh, the last figures that I saw from the federal government were that there were, in the private insurance there were approximately 24 uh, percent that were in that 19 to 35 range. Uh, what is viewed, and some of this is uncharted territory, what is viewed as optimal for planning purposes, at least going into 2014, is approximately, uh, is it 40? Okay, um, I was looking for reassurance from you. <laughs> I did not get it. Um, so, it is, it is uh, not as it was designed at this point. However, the experiences that in Boston or in Massachusetts, for example, that marketplace, is that the younger, generally more healthy people would sign up near the end and, and near the end of open, the first open enrollment, which is March 31st. Uh, we do have a number of initiatives to engage <coughs> young people, 18 to 19 to 35, we, uh, there are ad campaigns, commercials, digital and broadcast. Uh, there are groups that are specifically engaging uh, one called Young Invincibles because that's what we call the group, the Young Invincibles. Although while they may be young, they are certainly not invincible. <laughs> Accepted. Um, and so we are uh, really looking to, in a real meaningful way, engage all, all affinity groups, young young people are particularly important. Okay. So the reason I ask you this is because uh, getting to what Nina was saying about the data is this is a group that likes to make things with open data. And may I make a generalization about this group that we are? You mean uh, this young group? Yes. Or, young or 19 to this group. Oh, Well, I I'm got about it. to make a parallelization that we are speaking to uh, very a lot of the people in this room speak to that sort of general demographic. You are talking, trying to target. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything that you can think of that this group can do in specific? Like, is there a cool app that you think would help get people uh, interested in this demographic, interested in signing up? Is there something that you think that people in this room with the skills that we have, which is again, we can make websites and we can do cool things with data? Would that be something that would be useful for you guys, or would you be willing to engage with people who are interested in trying to act on that particular uh, uh, action? Yes and yes, and that, that has been part of the discussion, and that was going to be part of my ask tonight, but you have stepped up and uh, preempted that, and I appreciate that a great deal. So I can match make, uh, and I believe it's going to end up being the, the same person that the, the, the interface, but it may be it may be helpful to have two different people, that, you know, two different threads, if you will. Sure. But I'll be glad to do that matchmaking. Uh, specifically, you sir, thread, thread, thread. Uh, I need to articulate. That. Uh, in those that's yeah. great. Okay. Awesome. But but particularly the idea of potential apps and things like right. that. Is anybody sure? here interested in, in that? Talking about that and being part of the group on that? Maybe you know, I mean, that's kind of out here for Yeah, or something. Or something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, With great. Right. That's awesome. On the the discussions about apps, you you want to sit in on that, right? Great. Representing getting covered in Illinois. Okay. <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, can I just ask quick? Quick uh, budget question, I, or, or money question. Seeing if I've seen, I have seen a lot of the ads on Twitter, uh, as sponsored, as sponsored tweets, as well as banner ads and other things like that. Uh, I know that the federal government comped to states a lot of a lot of dough or whatever because because they signed on, they pay they pay for our stuff for the first X number of years or whatever. What? How much money are you guys dumping on online ads, and uh, where does that come from? Is that is that federal money or is that state money, or and are you guys getting good? Yes, getting good, good response, good ROI on that, or like what's going on? Right. Um, there, in terms of the marketing, 
That is the state's responsibility in a partnership model that we are operating under. The federal government provides grants mm -hmm. to partnership states, uh, actually several different types of grants, and the monies that are being used for paid or, or paid campaign are dollars that were granted to the state by the federal government. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, this is uh, this has been great. Thank you very much for you. for presenting. Um,